in 1993, I had written a score of books when Julia, my daughter, who was then seven years old, asked me for a story about witches. I came up with a story about a girl who discovers that she's a witch when she realizes that her mother has been kidnapped by her enemies, a faction of witches that pursue the red-haired chosen one, the one announced in the prophecy. But not all tales get written. Sometimes we writers leave them on hold so they can freshen up. And this one was on ice for 10 years until I mentioned it at a party held by the Adebe Publishing House. The editors were very keen on it, so much so they commissioned me to write a trilogy. I was a bit taken back, of course. A trilogy means over a thousand pages. Would I be capable? I started reading books about witches. Fortunately, I had studied anthropology at university and I knew a few very interesting ones, such as The Witch Cult in Western Europe by Margaret Murray, an anthropologist who claims that witches were pagan priestesses of an ancient religion linked to nature and the moon. It was romantic and interesting. There was also the book entitled Witches and Their World by Julio Caro Baroja, an anthropologist who studied the inquisitorial process against the witches of Zugara Murdi in the Pyrenees of Navarra, which speaks of the covens and the cruelty of the inquisitors. And then there's The Catalan Witch by folklorist Cels Gomez, which includes the oral tradition concerning witchcraft. Catalonia, land of mountains and enchantments, is rich in aphorisms, legends and bewitched territories, such as the Payas or the Ampordan. And the thing is, witches did exist. Between the 16th and 18th century, over 100,000 witches were judged and condemned across Europe, burnt at the stake or hanged. They were made to confess that they were witches following terrible torture. They were accused of summoning storms, of poisoning livestock and ruining harvests, of bleeding newborns to death, of giving the evil eye, of flying on broomsticks, holding parties in the woods, and much other wickedness. Was it true or false? Studies have shown that some hallucinogenic plants and fungi may cause the feeling of flying or traveling in time and space. And probably, many of those women accused of witchery knew these plants. They were midwives, healers and herbalists. These women, who lived in the country, helped with childbirth, cured the sick, collected medicinal herbs, prepared cataplasms and potions. Sometimes they had remedies for the trials and tribulations of love, and they even risked predicting the future, reading people's hands, rabbit's blood, or the water in the lakes. Having researched into our rural tradition, I turned to Greek and Latin sources of literature and was captivated by their sorceresses, such as the magician Serki, who lived on a Mediterranean island and turned Ulysses' men into pigs. But she fell in love with Ulysses and helped him in his travels. She was a solitary, wise, beautiful witch. Then there was the powerful Medea, who was abandoned by her husband Jason to marry a younger woman. Then jealous and betrayed, she poisoned the garments of the bride and killed her own children. She was indeed a vengeful, bloodthirsty witch. Nearly 2,000 years on, the tales of popular stories rescued by the Brothers Grimm and Charles Perrault spoke of solitary, old witches, which Walt Disney immortalized with the drawings of hunchbacked old women dressed in black and covered in warts. I wanted to break away from this topic, and having reached this decision, the two confronting factions of witches, Omar and Odish, were very clear in my mind. My Omars would be Margaret Murray's priestesses, who adored Hecate and Selene, and would help the others like midwives and healers of the rural world, whereas my Odish would be an unnerving sorceress of Greek and Latin literature and vampires of Central Europe. But creating the two worlds of witches was not enough. I needed to invent a past, an ancestral time, and feed in the element of marvel and magic. And that's why I wrote The Legend of O, a myth explaining the origin of the Omar and the Odish. Both, daughters of Mother O, came from the same stock, 
like angels and demons, Cain and Abel. But a red-haired witch, years later, was to end this ancestral war for once and for all. And that's how I livened up the story of the mystery with the prophecies, which are the poetic invention about the Chosen One and her arrival. To balance things up, I added a scientific spirit with the treaties, the concern of the erudite Omar as to the prophecies, and then there's the sacred touch with the astral conjunction and a comet. This is because, as with all crucial occurrences, the arrival of the Chosen One can be seen in the skies. And then there's the inspiration of the Greek and Roman mythology in the names of the key players, Selene, Demeter, Diana. I also wanted to use a symbol of power of the Mother O. I chose the golden scepter, the most coveted jewel. She who would possess the scepter would reign. In order to set unsettling scenes, I chose the volcanoes that spit fire and lava. They were the cracks through which the world of the living communicated with that of the dead. And of course, since there were two worlds, I had to use magic beings who lived between the two. They were ghosts, wandering souls who had become victims of a curse. Finally, the way that leads to the kingdom of the dead, the way to Om, is the definitive test which must be overcome by the Chosen One. Once I had woven the mythical and poetical setting of the trilogy, I had to choose where and when it took place. I decided that my story would take place in our times, and I came up with the village of Urt, near Hakka, in the heart of the Pyrenees Mountains. Urt is a little village of stone houses with slate roofs standing on top of a hill. It has a school, a library, tourists and off-road vehicles. But it's surrounded by mysterious woods, snow-capped mountains in winter and enchanted lakes. And in this wilderness lives the She-Wolf, whose name is taken by the clan featured in the trilogy. Nevertheless, adventure books are set in many places and I couldn't have my characters stuck in Urt. Our planet is still fascinating and I wanted readers to travel and discover other sceneries, other ways of life, other customs and mentalities. Travel is an important element of the trilogy and the places the characters pass through are not just taken at random. Sicily is an island surrounded by the Mediterranean Sea and crowned with a most powerful volcano, Etna, where Greek and Latin culture converged. Colonized by the Greeks and dominated by the Romans, Sicily is the Mediterranean essence par excellence. The Carpathos, in Central Europe, are the mountains of Countess Erzabeth Bathory, a historical character, the scene of her evil doings, land of dark woods inhabited by wild bears and eerie valleys, and has also inspired the legends of vampires in nearby Transylvania. Norway, homeland of the Vikings, and land of witches and mist. Lapland, in the Arctic polar region, is still inhabited by the Sami, nomads who farm their herds of reindeer. Iceland, with its magic geishas, glaciers, and volcanoes, is the most fantastic of the geography of the Atlantic. Greenland, the ice country, where last inhabitants, the Inuits, are survivors of the most inhospitable climate on Earth. Peaceful and welcoming, they have lived side by side with nature for thousands of years. In the Sahara, a scorching desert, live the Tuaregs, the blue men who ride silently and hide among the dunes. In Tenerife and La Gomera, the recovered tradition of the Guanche people, the first settlers of these heavenly islands, blends in with their subtropical lorry silver woodland and volcanic valleys. Crete, birthplace of Mediterranean civilizations, where priestesses did bullfighting and worshipped snakes. And finally, Popocatapel, the incomparable scenery of the great Mexican volcano impregnated with Aztec legends and traditions, a land where magic and reality live together naturally. And I used all of these materials, photographs, information, ideas and drafts, to form a wonderful yet real world in which to place my characters. Anaid, Selene, Gunnar, Rock, 